without you understanding love, you will never understand any of these things without you understanding love. And, and you need to come to understand love in two forms. You need to understand the love that comes from within you, which shall we call that, the, the name I gave that in the first century was the natural love, the love that comes from within you. And you need to understand it from the love that comes from God, from within God to you, which we will call the divine love. Those two forms of love and understanding all of the principles associated with them are the key to your understanding the rest of your existence. So the problem that many of us face is that we become fascinated with the metaphysical discovery right, of truth without focusing on how we actually can experience that truth. And the only way we can experience that truth is by growing in love. Right? That's the only way we can experience these things, these dimensions, if, in fact, that are above the dimension in which we currently live. And yet every time I say that to people, we still often want to go back to the metaphysical discussion. Right? And the metaphysical discussion, while it's fascinating, does not help me with this. And it's only that that will help me understand the metaphysical discussion from a soul perspective. So we, re we, become in, we get into a quandary then, don't we? We're like a cat chasing its own tail or a dog chasing its own tail in the sense that we're going around in a circle hoping to intellectually discover things with our mind that we are totally unable to discover and experience unless our heart changes with regard to love. Sorry, if you just say that into the... That's what the scientists are doing with the theories. It's the same thing. It's the fascination with ideas. Exactly. And you get a big idea. Exactly. And, and it's wonderful to have big ideas. It's wonderful. Yes. Because it, it is fascinating. It is fascinating. But, but the question to me becomes, what are we the most fascinated about? Exactly. Right? Now, if... And this is what I said in the first century, and I'll say it again now. If the, your largest fascination is with love you will discover all these other things. But if your largest fascination is not with love, then you might intellectually come up with a heap of theories and ideas and, and even somebody else might come along and tell you what's possible, but you'll never experience it. And this is the problem that we have. If our fascination is not with love, we really lose the point of the entire universe, which is for us to grow in love and for us to understand love and understand its complexity. Love, can I point out too, love is scientific. Love is also logical. Huh? It is also, of course, an emotion <laughs> or a feeling. It's emotional. But it also has these other flavours, these other things that we're often looking for. So this is why when we have an intellectual discussion about something in the universe, we become very enthusiastic and, you know, and animated because, because it is a part of our soul, this beautiful desire that God's placed into our soul to continue discovering, to continue discovering. What I'm saying to you, though, that unless you understand what the most important thing is to discover, love, you will never understand all the other things that are potentially able to discover because they're all based on laws of love. So every one of those dimensions that I've mentioned in that previous discussion are all based upon love and how you get there is all based upon love and the things you discover are all based upon love in that process. Yeah. And that to me is the most fascinating thing. But I find it quite interesting when we're talking that often it's not the most fascinating thing for most audiences. It's th the other things are the fascinating things. Yeah. If we use the microphone, can we have the mic? Because nobody hears otherwise. Sorry, it, that leads to the place where you could have a fascinating talk about the idea of God and love. Exactly. Yeah. Which is what we could all. Yeah, so if I, if I was really fascinated about love, can you see that we would probably be asking different questions today? Because it's our fascination about love that will lead us to understand all of these other fascinating things. 
But if we don't have a fascination with love and a discovery of love and what love is about and how we can grow in it and all those other questions associated with it, then can you see it's also impossible for us to ever experience these other things. And in the first century that's why I said, if you seek first God's love, all of these other things will be added to you. Right? Now it got written down now as if you seek first God's kingdom, <laughs> all of these other things will be added to you. And, and this is the reality, is that if we seek first God's love, then we have the ability to understand everything else. If we discuss everything else first, then we're never going to have the ability to really understand it because it's love in our soul that allows for us to understand it. So this is what I feel most of us are doing with our, with our development on the planet. I'm talking not just to us individually, but I mean on the planet. It's sort of like a bit of, it's a bit like this. It's an ups upside down triangle, if you like, where this is all the secrets of the universe. which are all based on one foundation, which is right down here. God's love. And what we're trying to do, we're here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find out about that and about that and about that, but we leave that alone. And yet that is the very foundation of our understanding. Without that, we can intellectualize about all these other things which we will never experience and therefore never understand. Once we actually grasp this to its full ability, to the, to the full way in which we can, now we have the ability, because we now have the very key to the understanding of everything else in the universe, because of this ability now to understand the key, now when we discuss these other things, we not only instantly understand them, but we can actually do them and experience them. And that's the difference. So, so what I find is while I am fascinated with all sorts of things in the universe, I find discussions about all of these other things I would, I would call it this word, premature. <laughs> premature. In other words, we're trying to discover things here, in this range here, which we are unable to discover because we've yet to grow up <laughs> enough to discover them. We're prematurely examining things that we have the inability, no ability to understand because we're yet to understand the basic cornerstone of all understanding. And this is what I see as a primary problem for all of us. We, we, we become so disillusioned with love, both God's love and also human love, we become so disillusioned with that, that we discount its power and we try to then discover everything else without understanding without even understanding the cornerstone of all understanding, which is the love itself that we've now discounted. We're going a long way around. Well, it's not only just the long way around, it's an impossible way around. That's the sad thing. It's impossible to get here in true understanding without this. That's the way God constructed her universe. So the reality is until we understand God's love... It is ra actually, in, we can discover a lot of things intellectually, but we'll never experience them and we'll never really fully understand them because we've never experienced them. And we can't because it's impossible to without understanding the basic understanding of love right at the core. The, the thing that's the, the, so this becomes the most important thing. So, so in the first century, and I've said this all the way through discussions now as well, in the first century I realised, the main problem with mankind is this. He refuses to understand what is the basic principle of understanding all other things. And as a result of that, it's impossible for him to ever get here. He can postulate and theorise and, and, but, but never experience this experience without that. And this is what I find sad in terms of what happens on the planet. 
a discussion about love, how many, how many times in the course of a day does the average person have a discussion about love and the theories associated with love mm. and the principles associated with love? And, the, and in comparison to how many times do they, under, do they have a, discu a discussion about other things? You can see in, ter in terms of even our inner priority list, like the discussion about love is often like right at the bottom of our time in terms of how much time we spend discussing it and we postulate about all these other things right because and the, and and it gets down to this under understanding because we are actually disillusioned with love and we don't think it's any point discussing it does that make sense all right i was just thinking if you can get your mind get, get your mind to get in love with that idea of God's love, yeah. then um, you're going to say, oh, blocked God, what block? You'd be really wanting to find that. You would. A or fear, what fear? You know what I mean? You would just be. So if that became my primary that. passion, isn't it? Mm. If that was my primary passion in life, was to discover everything about the basic building block of understanding of the universe, mm. which is love, yeah. if I. If I spent all of my time, almost all of my time discovering that and and we can discover other things. We we're we're multi capable of you know, we can have more than one discussion in the course of a day. But but if if our primary passion is that love, then of course we now have the ability to understand all other things. And and I feel it's very important for everybody to understand that. Like without understanding this, it is impossible to actually experience this without experiencing this and understanding this. Jessica? Oh, sorry, you want to... Oh, sorry, I was the last thing. Yeah. Uh, it's all right, it popped out. No worries, let's go we, there. We all think that God, that drawing is up the other way and God is up the other way. Ah, end. yes. Yeah, that's right. This is our problem, isn't it? We, we all go, oh, yeah, but, I, you know... The, the basic understanding on the planet is, oh, but we can't really understand love. It's so complicated and who knows about it anyway. And uh, there's nobody on earth that seems to be able to live in harmony with love anyway. And so we have what I would call disillusionment with love that then affects our ability to understand the rest of the universe. And, uh, and many of the, you know, the spirits that we talked about earlier who are, you know, so-called aliens and affecting the earth, these are people who are very disillusioned with love, that are using physical elements of the universe to communicate with us without understanding love. And I, I find so I find all of their actions quite sad to, to a degree, in that uh, it would be better if they understood love. And if they understood love, then they could understand far more things than what they feel they are capable of understanding presently. Yeah.